When it comes to lawn care, I think that people get addicted to it as a hobby in phases. Early on, you get excited about products, you get excited about the fact that you can put something into your lawn. You can do something, you can make changes to your habits, and get a result out of it. And what ultimately comes from that is the joy of getting compliments from other people on your lawn. But for me, it's the mow. It's all about the easiness of the mowing, the consistency of the grass blades, how it feels when you go through nice, thick, healthy grass. You get addicted to mowing. Eventually, once you start down this road, you get to the point where you start upgrading things. You start upgrading equipment, your backpack sprayer, your lawn mowers, try different fertilizers. Once you get to the point where you kind of have like your routine set up, where do you go from there? The thing that I find that's kind of funny is that all the things that I've learned over time have brought me now to a point where instead of trying to take care of the grass that I have, I'm actually I'm actually getting rid of it. I, I want to go to a next level where the seed, the grass, the cultivars, everything that's in my lawn is at a different level and it's high performing. That's why I did that. That's why my grass looks like that and my neighbor's is green. We've already sprayed the first round of glyphosate on the lawn and we waited a, just over a week did some watering it's really important that after you do your first round of glyphosate that you water what is there your dead lawn because the weeds that are still there and the tough grassy weeds that are still there will pop up when you give them some water then we can do another round of glyphosate and kill it so today is round two of glyphosate when it comes to when to start this whole process, if you've decided I'm gonna renovate my lawn, the by the book way says that you wanna look at about 60 days out from your first frost date. And that's when you wanna make sure that you have grass planted and you know rocking and rolling and going. It's not when you want to actually start the killing process, that's when you want your grass to be planted because it needs those 60 days to kind of harden and be ready to get through that frost and grow some roots so that it can survive the winter. I started this process in about the middle of July. Our first frost is sometime in, I think, middle of October. So I went ahead and went three months back. That's about 90 days. So I've given myself almost 30 days to completely kill this off. When you do these rounds of glyphosate, you want to make sure that you give the grass at least a week to die before you consider putting more glyphosate on or doing the scalp later on to remove the dead material. You need to give yourself at least a week to probably 10 days to make sure that you've got everything dead that is supposed to be dead. If you don't do that, you run the risk of basically all this effort that you've put into it being worthless. You'll, you'll be back to square one basically. You'll waste a bunch of money and time. So if you're gonna do it, do it right. And honestly, by the time this video comes out, Look at your frost dates, and it might even be too late to do this for this year. Just take that into consideration and maybe plan to do it in the spring or the fall. I would always recommend doing it in the fall, by the way. Read the label about your glyphosate. I'm using a 41% glyphosate product, and usually, in general, people run this at about two and a half fluid ounces per 300 square feet. Usually everything else we work with is in thousands of square feet. The way that we apply it is basically the same, just like you would spray anything else out of your backpack sprayer, but the ratio is different. So you're still going to take your two and a half ounces and you're gonna mix that with your gallon of water, but that one gallon of solution is only gonna cover 300 square feet. So make sure you have your lawn sectioned off into 300 square feet so that you can spray it properly. I've elected to dedicate all this equipment here, especially this sprayer, to only glyphosate stuff from now on because I don't want to later on go spray glyphosate on my lawn when I'm not supposed to. You know, I throw biostimulants in here, go out and nuke the lawn unintentionally. Just get a dedicated sprayer. If you don't have a second battery powered backpack sprayer, just go get a cheap $10 sprayer and fill it up a couple times. So like I talked about, you will spray this one time and you will still have stuff that will live. And if you want to do a complete kill off, take the time to Plan ahead and spray this multiple times. There's still stuff that's green in here, so make sure that you give it sufficient time after your application for everything to die. Use your blue marking dye as well and make sure that you're covering everything evenly. This is not an excuse to just 
bathe your lawn in this herbicide. This herbicide works by coating the grass leaves and then the plant takes it in through those leaves and it kills it down to the root. So make sure you're using something that's like a fan tip or an air induction tip. Get nice uh, fine droplets on this grass. So really the biggest difference between what we're doing today and say like a typical biostimulant application on your lawn through a backpack sprayer is really that the one gallon of solution is going over 300 square feet instead of a thousand. Other than that, if you've ever sprayed with a backpack sprayer before, this is pretty much the same exact thing. So I'm gonna mix up a one gallon solution mix first to spray against the fence line and all the edges. I learned the first time that if you mix up your four gallon batch first and try to lug that around while you're uh, manipulating the cardboard and stuff on the borders, it's not fun. So don't do that. Don't be like me. there doing the edges so we're home free from here on out this stupid thing still loses pressure on me every once in a while it's highly annoying that's why I picked this backpack sprayer to glyphosate with done once you're done obviously go inside and strip all the clothes that you're wearing go take a shower and get any kind of glyphosate that might have gotten on you off of your skin as soon as possible one thing I uh, I wondered about and had to ask some people was hey you gotta wash your clothes separately and most of them said no but I wash my clothes separately give them an extra rinse in the washer so there ain't no turning back after this for sure um, well, there wasn't turning back a week ago when I started this, but you get what I'm saying. If you got any questions, let me know down in the comments. And uh, next time, I think we'll be scalping it off and dethatching, preparing this surface. So let me know if you got any questions. We'll talk about it. Peace. Glyphosate. It's glyphosate, not glyphosate. Father-in-law told me you're trying to kill your grass. Oh, oh no, I am killing it. Can I tell? Well, yeah, we, we're wondering a little bit. The grass is starting to look like mine. There's something wrong. <laughs> oh, don't walk on the grass. There's chemicals on the grass, please. Kyle, your looks like your lawn could use a little mentoring. A little what? A little mentoring. mentoring.